So keep that in mind. Yeah, hey, forget I asked. <laughs> That'll definitely It'll do. Ew. Join the f Discord. It was the least fun I've ever had playing this game. A small but vibrant and extremely humble community. No, I've seen the sleeves, but I'm like, you said you're suiting up and then you put your sleep on. Thank you for saying that. Because I'm a demon on the keys. Next thing I know, we're both dead. I immediately left the lobby. In Vietnam. What are they playing for? Are they playing to win? <laughs> Stay humble. Stay humble. We are live. The fuck was that? I don't know. That was seriously lacking. I that I, I almost I actually almost think you need to redo that. That was so bad. It sounded I, like the the Patreon episode. One. I won't be doing I won't be doing that. And don't ever imply that the Patreon intros are of lesser quality. That's true. They're the actually, Saturday yeah, they're programs. better. They're better quality, actually. They're much better. And if you wanted to f uh, to find out just how much better, patreon.com slash the drop shot. Welcome to the drop shot, the peasant edition. Uh, peasant edition number 97. It's a joke. Thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, my name is Casey, also known as Razanon. I am joined, as always, by my good friend Tanner. Tanner, let's take down the Christmas tree, right? No. Let's take all down my, the Christmas tree. All my Christmas decorations are still up. I'm not kidding. One year we left all the stuff up until the beginning of March. Okay. I'll do whatever the fuck I want. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start a poll in chat. Should Tanner remove his Christmas tree? Yeah, they're so dumb. Okay, response minimum. We're going to have one is yes. One well, no. it's your it's your channel, so everyone in chat is just going to agree with you. Okay. If they were real ones, they would disagree with stupid Raz. But well, the poll we'll been... Has the poll been started? Is it working? Of course it doesn't work. You probably didn't enable it. Because you're I dumb. I typed it. You're dumb. Dude, I'm so mauled. Hold on. We're doing this again. Poll. Come on. Come on. Christmas tree stay up. Yes, no. Start poll. The poll's already active, it says. Okay, I don't care anymore. Yeah. Uh, welcome to the program. My name's Casey. He's, uh, <laughs> I was going to say he's Razanon, but he's not Razanon. He fucking wishes. He was. This is just a disaster. It's not the best. I mean, should we just end had. this episode and just post it like this? So we'll be back. Uh, it's an embarrassment, actually. We'll be back uh, Wednesday. Uh, anyways, episode 97. Fast approaching episode 101 on January 23rd. Take the entire day off work or school. Oh. Ship your family elsewhere away from your your home. Uh, your home. Yeah. Your, your domicile. Because uh, it's going to be a banger. It's going to be like our episode 100 special slash one year anniversary. It's going to be great. Welcome to our new gold patrons, Benjamin. G, Cameron, and Jack. I don't like R. that name. What, Cameron? That's my shit brother in law's name. Oh. So now I cringe when I hear that name. Yeah. yeah so it well, could be him. Maybe we should just be safe and ban that person. It's po We might do that. So, Cameron, welcome to uh, your collateral damage here. Uh, and also, yeah, Jack R. Thank you, new, to, new gold patrons. And new Damascus patron of Venlu, who came into uh, the Discord last night for our Damascus hangout. Now, unfortunately, Modern Warfare is a shit game, and he couldn't get it to work, which is unsurprising. Yeah, that was a fat rip. Uh, because it's a shit game uh, and it is poorly optimized, but hopefully he can get it to work uh, by next week. So thank you, dude. And Kyle S upgraded to Damascus as well. So thank you, boys. Thank you, girls. I appreciate it. Patreon.com slash The Drop Shot. It is the best way for you to support this program, this podcast about a video game. If you were looking to waste your money, Patreon.com slash The Drop Shot is the first place to do so. And we appreciate all of the new frogs. One thing we do very often, in fact, every week we have a Damascus hangout. So me, Tanner, all the Damascus patrons on Fridays, 7 p.m. Pacific time, 
we fuck around and do whatever. Sometimes we'll play custom games. Sometimes we'll play fucking Pictionary. We'll just get in Discord and kind of like bullshit with each other and just figure out what we're going to do. Lately, we've been doing a lot of Warzone customs. Uh, and we did that last night as well. And what's cool about Warzone customs is that you can make whatever rules you want. So not in the game, of course, but you gentlemen's agreement. And so shockingly, no one has broken the rules yet. Uh, and the rules last night were, again, no DMR, no Type 63. Uh, and that was it. No other prohibitions besides those. And the results were interesting. Uh, how did you enjoy the uh, the hangout last night, TDS? What were you using? What were you seeing a lot of? What are your thoughts? I had a blast. It was really fun. All of these Warzone customs have been extremely fun. I'm glad I uh, my audio issue was fixed from that first time. So we've just we've been banging these out. I've been having a lot of fun. True. Uh, last night I was running Mac 10 and the Tundra. It was. It was fun, but also there were a lot of situations where I wished I didn't have the Tundra because like, you know, the circle is the zone is just shrunken so small so quickly that it almost makes sniping worthless, kind of. So, you know, I kept getting ripped on because of that or just destroyed. But uh, Mac was really fun to use. I didn't notice anyone running anything out of the ordinary. I mean, well. Jake was running the fucking street sweeper because he's an actual piece of garbage. Um, but other than that, yeah, it was like I, most people were sticking on their normal guns. It seemed like I didn't I didn't get a win. Bango and I kept teaming up. We wanted to get a win together and uh, it never happened. I think we got second oh, place conspiracy, huh? Okay. We got third place. I won three times, but yeah. And you were dead every single one of those games within mm. three minutes. So it doesn't it doesn't count if your teammates carry you. Actually. Well, I wasn't dead, but I did get carried, uh, especially the first game. Here's what I did the first game. In a Warzone Customs, by the way, this is how much of a rat piece of shit I am, okay? We land farmland. Uh, we do two recons. I get a sniper rifle, a Pellington, and I camp in the final circle in the only building in that circle. And of course we win. Now, you could ask me, that sounds like an effective, fun, and exciting strategy. To which I would say, well, I did 50 damage. 5-0. Double digits. And that was me killing someone my teammates already downed. So I actually did virtually nothing. But I thirsted one dude who was on the floor. And that leads me to my next point about the customs last night. For that loadout, I was using a Pellington, which is a Cold War sniper rifle that they've ported oh. into Warzone. And it's shit. Is it? It's really, really, really bad. That's fucking crazy. The bullets just don't go where I expect them or want them to. It's like Cold War. <laughs> true, true, yeah. But it's weird because then I started using the Tundra and I got uh, the next game... I don't know if it was the next game, but the first game I used the Tundra with, I got three or four kills with it. Like, it works really well. So the thesis yeah. here, Tundra is pretty good as far as Cold War snipers go. Pellington, I could not get to work. It was really bad. I think I tried it two games, and I was like, I'm done with this. Like, bullets aren't hitting. Where You're also disgustingly terrible with a sniper rifle. That's so. fake news. That is absolutely fake news. And when I got the Tundra out, I was ripping Quiet. kids, dude. Quiet. I was ripping kids. Okay. okay. So. Well, you didn't get a 401 meter kill out of a moving helicopter, though, did you? Right. Okay. Well. On a moving helicopter, right? Well, yeah, I don't think so. Well, okay. We'll keep that in mind for sure. Clip that's it and that, ship it. It's possible that that's true, but if we both sniped in pubs, then we wouldn't make it to even our first loadout, let alone a win. Yeah, because you're garbage at sniping. Okay. Keep that energy. Maybe I'll snipe tonight. And you no. can use a DMR, you no. rat cunt. Anyways. I uh, mean, either way, I do better than you in that situation. So. Well, we'll for sure keep that in mind. But let me say this also. I was using the AMAX as well because of, and we talked about this on the program on like Saturday. Uh, we were saying true game data, did the YouTube video, blah, blah, blah. And he had his 
subjective list of five weapons that are going to be really good in Warzone after the DMR nerf. Uh, one of them was the AMAX. And one of them was the AN94, by the way. I use the AN94. I don't, I don't see it being that good. I think the, the, what's good about the AN94 is that it has like pretty good range very far away. But as a mid-range assault rifle, its its damage isn't good enough. I don't know. I just yeah. didn't like how the AN94 felt at all. It felt like it didn't just it just didn't do enough damage. So it, it I think it just has really good range, but like its actual raw damage uh, is not very high. So that didn't feel good at all. But then I was using the Amax and it fucking slapped. And I've used the Amax before in Warzone, and it always felt like it had more, uh, too much recoil. But last night, it didn't feel that way at all. It felt like perfectly manageable, fine recoil, and it was fucking dumpstering, dude. It chunks, dude. It's a chunky <laughs> Chunkers. assault rifle, dude. Just chunk, chunk, chunk. Interesting. It felt really good. And that leads me to th the question, was I just dumb when I tried it last, or... Did they change the Amax, or are recoil patterns different in custom games than they are in yeah. pubs? It could be, you Which never know. Which actually could be true. The, yeah, the, we would, we the would res know. speed is vastly different in pubs versus uh, custom games. Custom games res takes like 45 minutes. Oh, is that why I felt like it took so long yes, yesterday? Yes, because it does. Because it oh. does. Right? Yeah, That's what wow. I'm saying. So if some things like res time can be different in Warzone custom lobbies versus pubs, I wonder if how weapons perform could also be different. So my thing last time with the AMAX, I remember I couldn't set it up to how I liked it. Either the ADS was really slow, but it didn't have a lot of recoil, or it had decent ADS and too much recoil. I mean, so... I think that's what my issue was. I th I'm pretty sure I did kit it out so that it had like no recoil, but I hated the ADS time. That's what it ended up being for me. Yeah. So I'll have to see your setup. Maybe I'll run it tonight. I won't, but it's just a kilo setup. It's like extended well, mags. Yeah, it's always the same, right? Mer yeah, extended mags, Merc, Merc foregrip, okay. VLK, VLK, mono, yeah, long okay. So yeah, I'll yeah. figure it out. Uh, for me in Warzone, like. I used to care a lot more about AR ADS speed, but it actually doesn't matter. Like, if the difference between you killing someone or dying is the ADS speed of your assault rifle, you're in a terrible position anyway, and you probably are gonna lose and deserve to. Like, I, I agree with you on that with like SMGs, because SMGs you need fast handling, because that's when you're in the shits. Well, like, with an AR, you're so far away anyway, I don't really give a shit about my ADS speed. To a degree, obviously, but... Yeah. I don't know. I've evolved on that, I would say. But, anyways. Uh, so, the Hangout was pretty fun. Patreon.com slash the drop shot. A lot of people are coming through and having an absolute blast. And you guys should join them. So, consider doing that. And then, uh, last announcement for me here. I thought you were going to put a note, Tanner. But you didn't so yeah it was just about the war zone custom i already talked about it oh, okay cool uh yeah so okay so my last announcement here real quickly uh our last patreon episode was really good i really enjoyed it uh one thing we've been doing a lot on the patreon is like war zone brainstorming kind of shit and uh uh that was the topic of our last patreon episode and it was really good as far as i'm concerned it was fun to talk about it always is but I feel like the things we covered were also very interesting and insightful. Although, interestingly, we haven't gotten much feedback on that episode yet. If ever. Which makes me mauled. But, uh, but yeah. I got a DM about it today. Oh, yeah? What? Tell me more. I think it was from Proud. Proud Dad. Oh, okay. He had said, um... Uh, what do you say? So I was listening to the latest Patreon episode. I actually thought I'd try out the Tundra, and he's, he was like, Holy shit, it's so much fun to use. So he was absolutely wrecking with it, of course. Nice. Naturally. Nice. So, yeah. But yeah. Other than that, I haven't really seen anyone post anything publicly, but I got that today. Cool, man. Cool. You probably got some. You just ignored them, but. Uh, oh, well, I have. Yeah. I'm going to do those 
next week. <laughs> yeah. I promise. I swear I will. I'll have more time. Uh, <laughs> any announcements from you, Tanner? Yes. Um, well, this all just happened right now when you started streaming, apparently, because everyone started giving me things. So Crisp Eclair with the five offline gifted subs. She go with the offline gifted sub and Tanner is cooler with a 500 bits. <laughs> Let's go. Thank you, boys. All offline, all within the last hour, dude. Demons, dude. Thank Demons. you, gentlemen. I appreciate that. You love to see that. And speaking of gratitude, days, FPS, 500 biddies. Lord Byron, that's an interesting name. <laughs> Lord Byron 71, maybe this is any boomers in the chat. With the three months, Primarino, and Tanner is less cool with the gifty sub. Let's go. Thank you, boys. I appreciate it. Days, thank you. Lord Byron, thank you as well. And Tanner is less cool. I appreciate okay. that. Gifted subscription as well. And now, let's get into the program. If you were listening for the jingle, here it is. Dude, I don't put ice in my water often enough. Have you ever done that? Like I forget to put ice in it? No, what like do you mean? put ice in it. Is that something you I normally do? Yeah. Interesting. I almost never do it, but I did today, and it's so good. It's well, you so also tasty. have a Yeti, so you're going to put one small ice cube in there, and your ice is frozen, chilled for fucking hours, for right? For days, for but yeah. J days. Literally yeah, days. Yeah, just days. Like, unironically days. With a one one small ice cube <laughs> so so here's a tip for you guys listening uh putting ice in your water makes it taste better so now you know uh playlist updates before we get into the topic of today's program uh for cold war raid plus crossroads strike 24 7 i thought we talked about this but whatever uh gunfight blueprints fire team duos nuketown 24 7 is back to the nuketown 1984 it's no longer holiday nuketown so it's still in the game. It's just the old Nuketown again. Uh, and then Face Off and Prop Hunt. I think we announced those, but they just weren't We live talked about, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were saying they were coming out. Yeah. And then for Warzone, we've got Verdansk, Quads, Trios, Duos, Solos, Plunder Quads, and then Rebirth Island, Resurgence Trios, and Mini Royale, excuse me, Duos. So that is that. Uh, and now uh, we're going to get into the topic today's program, which is Q&A. So let's continue. I think we're about a month or so behind, which is, f well, yeah, a month and seven days. It's, so you it, it is serviceable. I would say that. Yes. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Our first one here, Salty Rhombus. Okay, I like the name. <laughs> it's very weird, doesn't make sense, I like it. For Warzone, I hear loads of people say that positioning is super important, but I can find very few tips and tricks to actually improve positioning, particularly on final circles where I'm often unsure. Of example, whether to take high or low ground, whether to move early to the zone or late, etc. Any useful tips in this area would be great. Sorry if you've already covered this. Thanks. I think this is a really good question. Yeah. This is a really good question because it is kind of... Because you can't just give a blanket, like, you know, whatever answer to this. Yeah. So, Tanner, what are your thoughts? This is a really good question because positioning is, like, often... We've said this. I think we've talked about this on the last Patreon episode. Is like, positioning is what sets apart, like, the players from being, like, good and really, really good as having just smart play styles and really good positioning. So, I mean, the way we think right now works best is we prefer to run, kind of stay towards the edge of the gas typically. Um, you know, we don't typically hot drop all that much, although I feel like we're kind of changing our play style like as we speak, like in the last couple of weeks, we've been doing different things. But um, I still feel like if you're like more of a beginner, you don't have any wins and you're trying to figure things out, um, land, don't hot drop, land somewhere a little bit safer, you know, get your money, get your load out and stick to the edge of the gas and just kind of pay attention to where, where the zone is going and where it came from to kind of think like, okay, 
maybe somebody's going to be coming from this side of the map, or maybe, like, I know nobody's going to come from the south, because the gas has completely blocked it off, and the zone's right on the edge there. So it's like, you know, you can stick to the sides that you know are already covered in gas, and they're on the edge, versus, like, the gas is coming in on the north side or something. Um, when it comes to, like, end game, I feel like it's kind of hard to determine that it kind of just changes based on where it's at on the map. Like, um... I think what a lot of people naturally want to do is like go to like a building right in the middle, which I think doesn't usually work out that well because like everyone is going to know you're in that building. Like somebody is going to, well, basically everybody is going to assume that like somebody's in there and they're just going to be watching that like a hawk. I often feel like you're better off wherever the high ground is, like whether that be in trees, hiding behind rocks um, and using that to your advantage versus just being in a building thinking you're safe because you're i feel like you're probably less safe if you're in that building in the middle of the zone so i think playing the edge if you're like a noob don't have a lot of wins uh, which i mean we don't either but i think playing the edge is probably the best way to do it um move early to the zone or late i think you should try running right with the gas i mean don't hey don't die to in the first circle right we get but in try pretty early lately though dude that's what I'm saying is we've been changing our play style, but for somebody who's like, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how good Salty is. Maybe he doesn't have like a win or anything or has very few. I feel like that's a good tip for like beginners to really, really start to practice. But yeah, th that's what I said at the start is I feel like we're kind of we're in the midst of changing our play styles completely right yeah. now. But I still think you should try sticking to the zone. See how that works out for you. Um, I mean, it's everyone, like every single good player, they all have different play styles. It's like That's some of them, too. I mean, you can, there's a bunch of different ways you can win. That's like, that's one good thing about a BR is you don't all have to play the same and you can get wins. You can camp a roof with a helicopter. You can hot drop and kill everybody at super and then just rush everybody with restock stuns and wipe squads for 30 minutes. I mean, there's a lot of different ways, True. but I, I would try the uh sticking to the edge of the gas strat see if that works for you yeah so okay you hear loads of people say positioning is super important that's true i think positioning is actually the most important thing to winning because if i have a full loadout and a dmr and i'm in a terrible spot i'll die to someone who literally just has like a ground loot m4 if their positioning's way better than mine. Like if they're on like a cliff side, just shooting down at me, doesn't matter how good I am, doesn't matter what gun I have, I'm gonna get shit on. I mean, to a degree, obviously. But positioning is is super important. I think it's the most important thing. Uh, tips and tricks to actually improve it. I mean, number one, honestly, I would say play a lot and don't just mindlessly play, but think about where you are and positioning too i think a big part of it is planning ahead so like as soon as you see where the new circle's going to be open your map formulate a game plan like okay there's a there's like a ridge here and then there's like buildings down here i would say go to the ridge unless like fucking uh hospital is behind that ridge and you're just gonna get picked in that case don't stand on the ridge unless hospitals already in gas before you go there so positioning the main thing you want to do and this is the same as multiplayer is not be exposed on all four sides of you this is why you don't run down mid on any map ever because you can get shot from 360 degrees but if you can be on the edge of the map or the edge of the circle, then you don't have to worry about being shot from there. So like, we'll be like right in the circle on the edge, like Tanner was saying, with gas behind us, so that we know there's no one behind us. And like the last time we streamed, that's how Locap and I won, is we got yeah. high ground over everyone else in the lobby and we were on the edge of the circle, so no one was behind us on the same ridge we were on. Because we were on the edge, and we had high ground, so we were just shooting down. Oh, and you guys were camping, of course. And then we were, in fact, camping. You and guys we... had a combined kill count of three. That's not true. Game. 
I we both had more kills than you that game actually. So okay. Oh wait, no. I guess. No, you guys had DMRs. So we probably. both had more than low cap. That's what it low cap had like two because he shit. Because yeah. low cap is shit. That's correct. Yes. Uh, yeah. And I had the most, of course. Uh, but we we can check the vod. Um, okay. What was I gonna say? Uh, but yeah, so positioning is super important. I think in general, high ground is is really good. But I think the mistake you might be making is if you're on high ground, but you're in the dead center of the circle. So like the circle's here, and then you're oh, on dear. a mountaintop in the exact fucking center. Well, then that high ground's not very good because you can get shot from below from 360 degrees. But if the circle is like here, and the mountaintop is like on the edge of it, then you do want to be up there. Because then you, you can't get shot from behind, from this way. And if you're getting shot from below, you can just back up a little bit, and you'll be in cover. So, yeah. It is, it's, the reason you're not finding that many tips and tricks on it, though, is because it's, it always depends on so many factors. Where's the gas? Where are enemies? Uh, are they sniping or not? Like sometimes I'll I'll want to be on top of a building if someone else is using uh you know like a kilo, but if they're sniping, maybe I won't want to be on that rooftop because it's really easy for them to pick me. So it just depends on a lot of factors. That's why it's hard to find tips and tricks. But I would say in general, try and be on the high ground with no one behind you. That's positioning tip number one. Focus really hard on that for three play sessions, and then you'll probably end up doing better than you have been. But yeah, it, it's hard to give tips and tricks of this kind, but mm -hmm. I hope that was helpful. That wasn't, I'm not as uh, happy with that answer as I'd like to be, but I don't know what else to say really. But, uh, but that was a good question and hopefully that helped. Go ahead. No, nothing. Oh, okay. All right, so our next question. Quad Dominator asks, I just recently realized that I go prone or slide every time I reload. Sheer force of habit. Didn't even notice I was doing it for a long time, and I'm not sure when I even picked up the habit. Is this a good thing, or is this something that could potentially get me killed fairly often? Since I started paying attention to this, I haven't noticed it getting me killed, but I'm curious as to your higher KD thoughts on this. Okay. Hmm. So going prone or sliding every time you reload, is that good or bad? Tanner, what do you think? Um, I never really thought about this either, but I know, I think I do slide often when I'm reloading also in, um, in Warzone and Modern Warfare. I never really thought about that. I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't see why it would necessarily be a bad thing. It kind of depends... It's hard to answer some of these questions now because it's like people have to be so specific if they're talking about Warzone, Cold War, multiplayer. Like I'm thinking in Warzone, it can be good and bad. I mean, if you're laying prone in the middle of a field reloading, I feel like that's worse than just trying to move and like get to cover before you reload or something. But if you're playing like multiplayer on Shoot House and just want to like reload real quick, then yeah, I mean like going prone, sliding around a corner, obviously those are good things to do. I mean, I don't think... I would never like tell you it's a bad thing to do and you need to immediately stop it. I don't know. I think it's just I I do it often myself too and I think you need to pay attention more if you're getting killed reloading. I think that's about your best answer, honestly. I don't think it's really going to fuck you up or anything, but Yeah. I don't this, know. Yeah, this is a weird weird comment. Um I so Sliding every time you reload, I don't see how that could be bad unless you're sliding into a bad position. But if that were... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but if you die because of that, then it's not because you slid while you reload. It's because you went into a bad position. So I can't see how that would get you killed unless you're sliding somewhere dumb and then stop doing it, obviously. However, going prone while you reload, I mean, the reason that's good... Is I'm assuming you're beh you're proning behind cover and enemies are in front of you. That's obviously fine to do. Uh, but crouching might be better sometimes. It depends on where enemies are uh, in relationship to you. And one weakness of going prone while you reload is that you're slow.
So if I prone and I start reloading and then someone walks around the corner, I'm absolutely fucked. Because I can't move because it's going to take me 20 minutes to stand up. And I also am going to have to cancel reload as well to even start yep. shooting my gun. So you're just triple fucked. So proning to reload's fine if you're certain no one can get to you before you're done reloading. But in, if you're not certain, it's probably better to crouch because then you can stay behind cover. But then if someone turns the corner, you can quickly stand up cancel reload shoot or stand up and melee uh or just run into a room or something but if you're prone it's going to take you too long and you're going to die uh so yeah but if you're not noticing it getting you killed then you're probably not making those mistakes so i wouldn't worry about it no because yeah, yeah i prone often when i reload too because most of the time it's just safe to do that so, yeah good question though uh okay what do we have here Bud Reds with the three months. Wicked with the gifty boy. Venlu with the Twitch Prime. New Frog. Welcome, dude. Pritchy Boy with the 1,000 bits. And Mullet Proof, the child, with the 1,010 <laughs> bits. Let's go, dude. Jesus. Boys, thank you. Bud, Wicked, Ven. I appreciate it. Brothers, thank you very much. Pritch, the ever... Lo ever loving undying support of one of my favorite Australians thank you Pritchy boy and uh and mullet of course as well the 1010 bits <laughs> both of both of you have wasted entirely too much money on this program by the way but I appreciate it so thank you boys it means a lot let's move on thank you again Bjorn Tanner uh when you were a pro MLG Epic Gamer in 1926 and played pro. Wrong. 12 year old. Did your team go to any tournaments across the country or even across the world? Was being a pro gamer considered a new thing in 1926? <laughs> Where there were there good players like there are now? <laughs> Where there? Or was it all console aim assist rats like Tyler, the other, of course, drop child? Well, Tanner, uh, we'll send it to you. I mean, this goes this goes to show you how old this child is, right? Thinking I played against aim assist rats. Yeah, true. You dumb true. shit. True. Um, no, we played on online. We played in online leagues. We never went to tournaments. We did. There were tournaments we technically could have gone to, but I mean, like, I was so young, we wouldn't have won them, we wouldn't have won a dollar, we would have wasted money, my parents would have never let me get on a plane and go, I probably wouldn't have wanted to go, so. Um, also, back then, in 1926, uh... For those tournaments, like, I don't know how they are now, if they even do tournaments like this anymore, I don't think so, but you had to bring your own PC. Like they didn't, they had tables there. So you brought your own PC, your own mouse, keyboard, monitor, and you set it up and you played the tournament. Yeah. So, I mean, no, I'm not going to bring all that. And so no, I, this wasn't played on console at all. Bjorn. No, it was all played on PC. This was, this was before call of duty, CDL, all that shit was like a thing. I mean, this happened before all of that. Um, you know, Call of Duty was PC first and then console later. And most the average person does not know that. Yeah, that Call of Duty was strictly a PC game before it was ever on console. This was literally when he was born. This was happening, right? Like 10 years ago, 12 years ago. Yeah, pretty much, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was fun. We had online tournaments like. You know, there would be like nights where um, like my parents would want to go to like dinner or something and they'd be like, oh, like we're going to dinner here. Like, do you want to come? And I was like, no, I got a match. I don't want to go. And they're just like, OK, you fucking disgraced loser. Like, st stay home. Forget it. Like, there would be times they'd get all mad at me because they were like, come on, come on out and eat dinner. I'd be like, come on, dude. I'm, we're fucking scrimming, bro. I don't have time for that right now. Are you serious? Put the chicken tenders in the oven, mom. Yeah, and then my oh. um my PC used to always overheat for well, I think I, I look 
It didn't actually overheat. I don't know what was wrong with it. Computers, by the way, I still can't figure them out. Um, but it would like, it would always blue screen basically. So I thought it was heat, uh, like it was overheating, which may have been the case. I don't know. But so basically, I ended up taking off the side panel on my PC, and I would leave the window open in the winter. I mean, it's California, but still, like I was gaming at night. It was like 45, 50 degrees on some of the colder nights which you guys are laughing at, by the way, you don't live in California. Um, and I would get like a little fan to blow it into my computer to keep it cold so we could play longer. <laughs> Otherwise, I would like keep like crashing and then somebody would have to sub in for me. I just imagine your panel like hanging on your uh, wall. It's just taken off and you hang it on your wall. Not hang it, but like place it like so it's uh, leaning mm -hmm. on your wall. Leaning. That's the word I was looking for with some dumb little fan. Like, yeah, back then, right at your GPU. back then, too, that was when computer cases had those side panels that had a, a fan built in. Did you ever have one of those? No, you didn't have. That's what they used to make all of them. At. So I Whoa. had like I had two normal size fans in the front, one normal size in the back. And then on the top of this case was like a giant 360 millimeter fan. Damn. I think it was it was a fucking monster fan and that was the exhaust and that was the exhaust and on the side panel there was like another 140 or 120 that uh, that brought air in I think they were weird but anyways even that thing would overheat that's so funny <laughs> but um, so no we never went to any physical tournaments we just played online league play yeah that's so cool that's so funny. I remember you telling me that. Like, you used to put a fan <laughs> next mm -hmm. to your PC. It works, though. It cools it. Uh, so yeah. It works very well, yeah. Yeah, so there's some there's some his historical education for you. From 1926. Uh, from 1926. All right, it's so one. weird being called old by some stupid child. That makes me mauled. Well, we're almost 30, dude. Well, we are. Me. We are old in a video game, of course. Yeah. Steel Switch asks will there be any real benefit for call of duty to have a streamer mode i am not sure if stream stiping is or was an issue in call of duty so i'd like to hear your point of view or as you said in the past q a episode your dick is having a dry spell i'm sure as soon as you're monetized on youtube it will get mad slippery it's fake news uh streamer mode in call of duty tanner mm. so for those of you who don't know what streamer mode is there are a bunch of different things that certain devs will do for streamers. So one of them, and Cold War does this actually, you can anonymize your name so that when other people see you in lobbies, it just says like kitten code name. It doesn't actually say like symphony. Uh, yeah. And then you can also have it to where everyone else in your lobby has a random code name so that if someone's trying to stream snipe, snipe you, they won't see their own name. They'll just see a bunch of random code names. Uh, that's one thing they can do. Another thing is like delayed queue. So when you press Q and you have streamer mode on, the game won't tell you, but it's just going to not queue you for some indeterminate amount of time until it like randomly queues you and it won't tell you you've actually queued. It'll just look mm. like you've queued. So yeah. that's so people can't just like press start match at the same time as you. Uh, Warzone, I don't think has either of these. I don't think Warzone has any kind of streamer mode. Anyway, so that's what that means. I used to hear things about Warzone streamer mode, and I'm looking it up right now. And apparently there is or was a streamer mode in at some point. I don't know what the issue was, but people said it was like such a joke that it's not worth running or like it. I don't know. It's like it, it made the game unplayable is what I keep reading. Because I remember hearing something about that a long time ago. But um, regardless, even if it's there, nobody uses it because it must not work very well if it's in the game. So, um, yes, I do think there needs to be a decent streamer mode for Warzone. I mean, even with, like, the amount of people playing this game, I mean, if, like, Nick Merckx or somebody is streaming and has, like, 30,000 viewers, it's like one of those guys can easily get in and stream snipe him, at yeah. least. I mean, that, that happens all the time. Like, even if these guys aren't necessarily trying to stream snipe them, it's like... Well, I guess it's still stream time. I mean, people bring them loot and just drop it off to them. They bring them helicopters. That shit and then, annoys me. Yep. And then the the streamer kills them and then they yell like, oh, Nick, I love you. Nick Merckx, I love you. So something dumb like that, you know? Yeah. Um, 
but yeah i mean there there needs to be some sort of a streamer mode i guess yeah for me it's like yeah there would be a benefit and it's also it would be so easy for the devs to implement like why not do it it'd That's be the easiest point. thing like it's not like it's hard good you really don't hear a lot of these big streamers complain about it that often though uh, you ever notice that you don't see it a whole lot yeah that's kind of true I mean, maybe it just happens so often sniped. it's normal i think it's just like people die to hackers so much that who cares if someone streams sniping you yeah at true. least they're not botting you you know yeah so i think that's like the the focal point of everyone's complaints i had to move my camera mm -hmm. but uh but yeah yeah so yeah I, I don't know my stance on this is like it should be in the game because it's just so easy to implement. Like, why not? Just randomize names, add a delay queue. Like, it's so simple. It's not like we're asking for an anti-cheat or anything. Fucking idiot. Cunts. Anyways, good question still. Wilson. Have you ever thought about pursuing a career in the tech industry? Uh, wait, wait, wait. You're not going to answer the second part of that question? Oh, well, it's not. I said that. Just a... Oh, okay. My dick is not mad slippery. There. Is that an, yeah. Is that an answer? It's dry. That Still an answer dry. For you? The, the driest. Uh, anyways. Wilson, have you ever thought about p pursuing a career in the tech industry? You both seem to have extensive knowledge of the hardware components and software utilities associated with computers. <laughs> Tanner, what are your thoughts? Uh, no. There are a lot of people that know, like, an average amount about computer hardware. I know some things about computer hardware, but when it comes to, like, software, oh, absolutely nothing. Yeah. Like, if somebody says they know about software, but then don't know how to, like, code and do all that shit, then you don't know about software, right? It's like, you, you know how to download MSI Afterburner and up the fucking voltage on something. It's not, you know, you're not good at software because you can do little things like that. So, no, I mean, those guys are very, very smart. And I feel like people think you can learn or like you can just Google things and I don't know, figure shit out. But it's like those guys have been just like reading and researching and tinkering with things nonstop for years to learn that shit. And um, I mean, we're we're not even relatively close to any of that. So yeah. no, I d yeah. back in high school, I did think that was something I wanted to do. Um, I thought like, Oh, like computer science would be cool. And then like, you kind of get a little bit older and like starting college. And then you like look into computer science and you're like, yeah, never mind. That sounds fucking boring and awful. Right. And it's like all of the, the PC repair type jobs. I remember looking into those, like thinking about that out of high school. And it's just like the same thing. Most of them, I mean, back then they really didn't pay very much. I don't know how it is now, but that was for like building PCs and whatnot. It seems to be different now because everyone's building PCs and gaming computers. But um, no, I don't think I'm smart enough to do any of that. To yeah. be honest. Yeah, Wilson, there's so... There's a difference between being good at using a program versus being able to build a program or develop a program. So like MSI Afterburner, okay. Relatively simple, but some sophistication in that program. And if you wanted to know how to do like everything using MSI, it would take you some knowledge and a little bit of time and learning and shit. And like, we could do that, but that's different than like, okay, make an app or like, yeah. or like design a program like MSI Afterburner. That is fucking 30,000 times more complicated than Tanner and I are even remotely fucking close to understanding. So yeah, it's just like, uh, you know, like. The reason we seem to have knowledge of like computers and shit is probably just because you don't use a computer like a gaming computer. So you just have never like looked into it. But we actually don't know much about computers at all. No, nothing like actually. Uh, it, it's kind of like it's kind of like 
okay, Tanner's uh, Tanner's wife is like a wedding photographer. She probably knows a lot about cameras. What lens looks good, what cameras perform well in low light conditions, etc. shit like that, whatever. How to use a camera. That is totally different than Tanner's wife being able to like design a camera. She probably yeah. doesn't even know how a camera works. I certainly don't. I don't have a clue. Yeah. There's like a there's like a lens with like a fucking laser and you press a button and like light shoots out or some shit. I don't know. And she probably doesn't know either. So it's like there's a there's a huge fucking delta there that is actually very hard to to cross. So I mean, I think we could if we had the interest of like learning how to like write C and write Java and like do all that kind of shit, but it's not we're not any closer than you are to learning how to do code. No. Like you I we would both be starting from zero for all three of us. <laughs> I remember in high school I took a it was like basic something to do with computers, but there was like a semester where he got into uh coding. And it was like I thought I was so cool I like coding these little like HTML fucking <laughs> Basically, I mean, I don't even remember what you called it. It was just like yeah. the, the most basic coding ever, right? And then even towards the end of that semester, it got so hard that like you would have a page of text. And if you had one symbol wrong, your entire page and website would be ruined. Yeah. And you would have to go through and figure out, oh, my God, what is wrong? So he'd like come over and you're like, dude, I don't know. I don't I don't know what I did wrong. And yeah. he would come over and look and he'd stare at it for a little bit and he's like, oh, like that, that, um, you know, like that letter or like there was supposed to be a space between this and that. Yeah. You do that and you change that and then the entire web page works. I get that shit is so frustrating. Yeah. That's kind of when I learn like, oh, man, I don't I don't know about this. I thought this would be fun, but now it kind of doesn't seem fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a lot sure. of numbers and letters. It's just a technical skill like anything. Like, I've been driving a car for fucking... Well, you haven't in the last year. That's true. I had driven a car for, like, 11 years straight. I have no idea how a car works. Here's how, here's how, my, here's how a car works. Ready? I open the door. I sit down. I put the key in the thing where the key goes. I turn it. There's a big rumble. And then I press gas pedal, go forward, brake pedal, stop. That's that's the extent of my knowledge of a car. If I know how to operate a car, not super well, by the way. I'm a pretty shit driver. But well, judging from how your fucking bumper send, is ripped off, I and can yeah. send pics more than the bumper. I have fucked that car up. But still, I know how to drive. I don't know how a car works. I'm as close to being a car mechanic as you are. I'm as close <laughs> to being a car mechanic as Bjorn, who's never driven a car and is 12 years old. Because we would, we both know nothing about being car mechanics. That's oh kind of the analogy I would use. So, um, thank you though. But yeah, we don't know shit yeah. about computers. We just don't. I don't think you filled your car with gas in the last eight months. Uh, I, I'm not kidding. I haven't. But you my, did that one time we went to Big Bear, and that was probably the only time. That was for sure the last time. I don't even know if I remember how to. My uh, my mother's been using my car though, so she fills it with gas most of the time. But yeah, she usually has it, so I have to borrow my brother's car. Anyways, whatever. Tell her uh, to get her own car, right? I that is something I might consider doing. Um, kill a cam, three months sub, dude. Let's go. Welcome back, brother. The sick limey Brit British person. I don't know if I just said a racial epithet, so sorry. But he, hey can't be racist against white people so fuck you limey just kidding anyway kill a cam thank you for the resub dude i appreciate it uh that was a joke by the way it's i'm not getting into it uh bango with the gifted sub as well let's go dude the nine total gifted subs thank you bango i appreciate you brother honored to have you here thanks bro Let's comment. Let's, uh, let's. <laughs> I don't even understand it. Let's move on. Only Slightly Bad asks, what made you guys choose Call of Duty over, over other FPS titles? 
such as Battlefield, Rainbow Six, Squad, etc., as your go-to shooter, asking as a primarily Battlefield player. I think Tanner is in the best position to answer this, but I'll I'll chime in as well because Tanner mean, uh, Tanner played Battlefield a lot, maybe before Call of Duty. So, anyways, yeah, Tanner, what are your thoughts? Well, I've never been one to like pick one over the other. Um, I mean, if Battlefield comes out with a good game later this year, I would love to play it. I've I've never been one of those people to like compare Call of Duty to Battlefield to be like, oh, like Call of Duty is so much better. Or Battlefield's such a better game. Call of Duty is shit. It's like if they're both good games, I'll play them. I don't really care. Um, I mean. <sighs> I don't know which one I really liked more to start off with. I don't know, because I was playing both of them so long ago. Like, I guess probably Battlefield, Battlefield 1942. Because that game, like, when I first bought, I only played offline. And then it's like I had to use my dial-up internet to play one match a week for 15 minutes. Because um, our house couldn't receive any phone calls during that time, so. I think Battlefield, the franchise, though, has just kind of been ruined in the last, I don't know, four or five years. I can't think of when Battlefield 4 came out. Uh, but it's just, it's been ruined. The game has been really bad. The developers don't listen to anything. They make horrible changes. Uh, they do like World War One, World War Two, which people I don't think really care about anymore. I mean, it could just be Modern Warfare forever. And that's what people would be fine with. But Call of Duty, I think when it comes down to it, it's just like a basic, fun first person shooter that you can just jump into quickly and like get some action. And now with Warzone especially, I mean it's it's probably the best BR I've it's for sure is the best BR I've ever played. Yeah. Um which doesn't say a whole lot because there still aren't a ton of BRs ever made, but it is definitely the best one made. They're all pretty shit, so, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Buggy. They're most of them are pretty bad disasters. really. Yeah. But yeah, so Battlefield, I mean, I like Battlefield mods more than the core game, like the Project Reality that I played for fucking years. I still, you know, I still occasionally, like once a year, I'll re-download that game and go back and play it for a few hours. Um, just to like, you know, because I'm feeling like playing it, and then I go and load in, and I'm like, oh, I forgot this game has 12-year-old graphics, I'm gonna go play Warzone now. Yeah. Uh, but like Rainbow Six was, I do like Rainbow Six, actually. I thought that was a very fun tactical game. I just kind of got sick of getting like, I feel like you get one framed by everybody. Like you peek a corner and some dude's already pre-aiming it and your oh. fucking forehead is just ripped off before you even get around the corner enough to visibly see the person. Yeah. So things like that bug me, but there's a lot of team play in it. Squad is, Squad is made by the same people that made the Project Reality mod. Like the same group of people, they branched off, they made their own game. I've just never gotten into it. Squad, I think, is too bare still. It needs, they need jets and squads. They need attack choppers. They need way more maps. Just, it needs everything still. It's very empty. I mean, Project Reality took like six to eight years to be really good. So it just needs more time. But like all of those games are fun to me. What it comes down to is I think we chose COD because that's what the most popular game is. And like Raz has always said about it is there's a new game every single year. So you always have content to talk about. That's probably the best part about it yeah but yeah i'm not just like a cod gamer i like all of those games PUBG, i'll play that i played fortnite for a long time even i like all of them well i'll edit that out yeah um so call of duty is special because so okay like rainbow six siege and squad for example this isn't really that true for battlefield but for those two at least i feel like those are games you're only going to enjoy if you have like a group of friends that you have like a team and you try and win because playing a tactical shooter, I feel this way about like Valorant and CSGO too. It's like, I'm not going to play those things that are like super tactical and team oriented and have to rely on fucking randoms uh, to like cover the corner that's behind me. Because then they get shit on and I die and I'm fucking mad. Like, all these super tactical games, you have, I feel like, you have to have friends, like a core squad that you always run with, for them to be fun. Because then, you can, like, rely on people, 
Uh, you know where everyone's strengths are at and shit. Go ahead, Tanner. What? I don't, CSGO competitive pubs are so funny. Those guys get fucking mauled. You yes. want to see somebody rage? Q and do a random comp lobby. Oh my god. The most toxic gaming community. Holy shit, they are mad. Yeah. It just made me laugh that you said that because it's true. Like you you need I mean you can do fine playing with them. Like a lot of them will be very good. But also if you miss one shot in fucking 14 rounds, they'll flame you and they'll vote to kick you out. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I uh I believe that for sure. So but anyways, so and for Battlefield that's not that much true, but like this is why I don't play like fucking search in uh in COD either. It's like I'm not gonna play some non respawn game mode unless it's competitive, ranked, and I have I know my teammates and we're in Discord. And those things I'm too old. I have a full time job. I'm not gonna like go seek that out. It's too much work. And this is what Tanner was saying with Call of Duty. I can get on for a couple games. I don't need fucking teammates. I don't need to be in voice with anyone. Uh, I can't get friendly fire team killed. And you can just run around and have fun. And also Call of Duty has progression across matches. Some of these other games too do too. Like CSGO ranked mm -hmm. mode. The progression between across matches there is your rank obviously. Uh, but like Battlefield, it doesn't really have that. Or maybe it does, but it's not as sophisticated or as, like, expansive as, like, Call of Duty, like, progression. There's, like, prestige system. Well, there used to be Fs in the chat. There's, like, all the challenges. There's camos. There's, there's calling now. cards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I think that's another thing, too. And the biggest thing, probably, is that Call of Duty used to be, Fs in the chat once again, a fast-paced arcade-style first-person shooter where you could just run a corner and fucking dink like four kids. And that just yeah. doesn't happen in Rainbow Six or Squad. I don't know about Battlefield, but I feel like it doesn't really happen much in Battlefield either. Because Battlefield's got a lot of vehicles, and it's like real large scale. There are infantry-only maps, though. How do they play compared to, to Call of Duty? I mean, they're still a lot bigger. I just know those Team EXE guys that play Battlefield, they're fucking nuts. The, the clips are actually really exciting to watch in Battlefield, I think. Yeah, I, and that's why, and it's not a coincidence then, that of all the examples listed here, Battlefield's my second favorite. I like yeah. Battlefield because it's closer to arcade. So I think that's, yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's why. Yeah, Battlefield's closer to Call of Duty where it's like the time to kill isn't instant like it can be in Siege. Like, I don't, I didn't play Siege a ton, I had probably, I don't know, maybe a hundred hours in it, but I feel like, like a headshot with any gun, I think is a one shot down. I'm not kidding. I think any gun just about, Yeah. if you hit them in the head, they were dead from like almost any range. Yeah. So shit like that is annoying. Like if you get like a random spray and get lucky, then like the person's just dead. It's too quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I guess the last reason too, that we, that call of duty is my main FPS is because all my normie friends play it. I'm not going to get fucking Michael to play squad. Yeah. <laughs> He's just never doing it. It's way too hardcore. So if I want to play with all my normie friends, and that's when I originally started playing Call of Duty, was on an Xbox with my normie friends. They they were not Stop saying the word normies, right? Okay. Well, okay. It's weird. Uh, but they were just not interested in getting balls deep in something. They were only going to go surface level, and Call of Duty's good for that. So yeah. That's what I would say. That's a good question, though. That's a very good question. Bango with another gifted sub. Thank you, dude. I love you, Bango. Much appreciated, brother. And by the way, Mr. Salmonilla is in the chat. COVID survivor. Welcome back, Sally boy. We've missed you. And uh, I'm glad you're back. I'm glad you haven't died. Maybe not super responsible of you. Well, to he's be a super spreader. A, to be a super spreader. That's correct. To contract COVID and then get on an international flight uh, and infect everyone uh, in your wake. That's not great. Right? But it's a joke. I don't fucking care. Welcome back, Sal. So. Uh, look, right. Apple Care. Next one. Ryan Set. Tanner. Are you as negative in your everyday life as you are on the pod? 
Is everything new in your life the dumbest, <laughs> the dumbest thing you've ever seen? I fucking hate Ryan, you piece of shit. The great question. Ryan, you're the dumbest person in the Discord, right? Is um, this the dumbest thing you've ever heard? Yeah, it's, it's literally the dumbest question we've ever gotten, right, Ryan? You could have asked any question, and this is what you asked. True. Um, yes, that's the answer. Yes. It's that simple. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking piece of shit rat. Indeed. Indeed. So, well, that was a question for sure. All right. Next one. From Throttle Out. So, not quite a question, okay? But... Not off to a great start. Frankenstein, your perfect Call of Duty map. Six style. Sixes style. Pick four pieces from any COD multiplayer map to build the perfect map. Lane one, lane two, lane three, and then piece four is special aspect. High rises run to the top of the build building. Satellite ski lift. Afghan's clutch sniper ridge opening. That wouldn't be special, etc. Include if needed the environment, night, fog, snow, rules. Cannot use a map more than once. Okay, this includes any reskins or remakes. The map will need to have a three-lane layout. At least half-ass explained. Okay, interesting. So. Yikes. This is a lot. That's a lot of thinking there. It's a lot of a thought. A lot of on-the-spot thinking involved with this question. Yeah, so I'm going to try first. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can't Frankenstein a map doesn't make sense That's, I, I keep thinking of combining different parts of a map and i just, i don't know how it would work <laughs> here's what i would do okay slums sl slums left lane or okay slums on the side that has the room next to the fountain rather than that weird bench that lane of slums mid firing range of course right side lane jeep nuketown and then special aspect pass none here's what i don't want in my call of duty maps anything fancy i don't want something to be special i don't want it to be fun and unique and new i don't want some cool feature that's the last thing i want out of a map here's my special aspect don't do anything special and then the map might play well <laughs> Jesus. that's my special aspect so anyways that Fuck. would be my Franken map. That, you can pass if yeah, I you mean, want, Tanner. I, I mean, know. either way, none of it makes sense. I just know the center of my map, I would want the center of crash because I love the center of crash with a downed helicopter That's a good and, those, and those buildings surround. I think it's the best center, right? It's a okay. fantastic center. Okay. Um, One of my lanes, maybe... Ugh. Maybe the lane on strike where the statue is. I guess you can consider that a lane. So on strike, That's there's kind of there's lane. there's the mid row. There's the mid road. There's the opposite road, which is like behind those apartment buildings. And then the other road is where statue is. So maybe that side, because that's a fun area to play. I think that would actually mesh well with uh, crash um, lane three. Oof. Now I've got a really long, awkward map. No. Because what you could do is favela, the the that, the road, that, the street, the main yeah, road. Yes, Ooh, the street. that's a good idea. That would fit, right? Putting that, yeah, that that is a good idea. Because then, because that strike side, there's a lot more cover, and then that favela side is a little bit more open. I think that would flow pretty well. Yeah, that'd flow pretty well. Yeah. Um, special aspect. Ooh. <clears throat> oh shit. Um. Modelo, by the way. Oh, here's my special aspect. I, uh, I am amending this. On my, on my Franken map, shotguns don't fire. That's my special aspect. They just don't work. <laughs> There's my special aspect. Okay. Um, hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'd want as a special aspect. That would How require about, more. Know what's know what's something special now in Call of Duty that they don't do anymore is make a map that's, that's based in a time frame that's the middle of the day, right? So it's 12 noon and it's sunny everywhere, true. and I have perfect visibility. True. There's your fucking special aspect. How about true. that? No visibility and yeah. good visibility. <laughs> good visibility. That's such a good aspect. 
Holy shit. Yeah. Man, I Inclu want these yeah. maps now, dude. So not nighttime, no fog. no. I do like snow maps, but not for visibility. No snow. I just want a map, picture strike or picture crash. Middle of the day, sunny. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. True. True. <laughs> So there That's you go, so buddy. Fucking funny. That was actually a better question than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. So thank you for that throttle. All right. Next one. Humpty. What are yours and Tanner's top five favorite alcoholic beverages? And I'm assuming this includes oh, beers and cocktails and liquor straight, whatever. Yikes. Top five's a lot. Five. So let's do three. Let's do three. My go. Three, okay. Two, five. Well, two of mine are basically going to be the same. I'll do an amount until I see fit, right? <laughs> so yeah, my number yeah. one, okay. Jameson and ginger ale. My number two, Jameson and Sprite. Okay. My number three. Same drink, but. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot. There are a lot of beers I like, but I don't know the names of any of them because usually my friend that works at a brewery give them gives them to me and I try them like, oh, this is the best beer I've ever had. And then I never have it again because it was a limited release and I don't know what the name was, right? Dude, have you ever had BJ's beer? No. You know the restaurant BJ's? I know there I I know a couple types of BJ's, yes. Okay. Well be nice. There you go. <laughs> They have some good beer, by the way. Well, They're nutty brunette. Fake news. They're nutty fake brunette's news. fucking good, dude. Anyways. Yeah. Um. I guess. Oh, oh, I got to get on. Old Fashioned. That's probably my number three. Old Fashioned's a good one, yeah. yeah. Maybe a good. Oh, oh, baby. I got it. I got it, baby. Everyone, go on Google right now. Wherever you're from, search flights to San Diego, California. <laughs> Sure. Um, you're going to go on Google and you're going to look up C-O-A-S-T-E-R-R-A, -R -R Co Co Costera San Diego. Look that up. Go there and order their frozen coconut margarita. Oh, my God. It was so fucking good. Best margarita I've ever had in my life. Does it come with a skirt? Um, you're so dumb. Imagine, uh, you're so, I hate guys like you. I hate guys like you. Oh, you're drinking a margarita. You're a pussy bitch. Go. You're so dumb. Um, I can probably think of a fifth one here. Hold on. I just had it in my head, but I forgot because I got so excited about that one. I like how there's no beers in your top five. That's interesting. Well, because I don't. Beer is beer to me. There's. I've never drank a beer that I'm almost like, oh, my God, that's amazing. I just drink a beer. I'm like, yeah, it's beer. All right. Okay, sure. Um, Fuck, I had it. What's a good like drink that you order at um uh like weddings and shit? Like what what is your go to at a wedding? Uh either a screwdriver or a Cape Cod. What's a Cape Cod? Cranberry vodka. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, that's a good one. With a shitload of limes. Oh, we could throw some citrus fruits in there, yeah. Throw some citrus. Lime, um or orange. Man, what was my fifth one gonna be? Lemon. Must not have been that good because now I can't think of it. We'll I don't know. There's my there's my top four though. Yeah, we'll come back to it. Just let me know if you remember it. Okay, this one's pretty easy for me. Number God, one. Here we go. The Sculpin IPA. Number one idiot. is of course San Diego's own Ballast Point Brewery Sculpin IPA. No flavors. No grapefruit Sculpin. The grapefruit Sculpin is excellent, of course, but regular ass Sculpin, easily number one. Number two is a, is a Cape Cod, which is a vodka cranberry juice. Uh, and you know, you can make your joke, that's fine. Uh, number three is Johnny Walker mm. Double Black Whiskey. Neat, neat, just that, right? That's the only whiskey that. he's ever tried, so that's why that's his It's not, I had, some Woodford, I had some Woodford uh, Reserve last night. Yeah, I need to. I'm kind of on a like a beer craze right now. I'll, I'll get back into my hard liquor here soon. Interesting. Interesting. Number four might be a nutty brunette from BJ's. Uh, and then number I'll give five. You a nutty brunette. Number five is either a screwdriver or Pliny the Elder. Yikes. 
Such a basic bitch. Pliny, Pliny the Elder. Pliny the Elder is really good, but I it's so fucking hard to come by that I haven't drink I haven't drank it enough to like have a solid opinion on it. Whereas with yeah. Sculpin IPA, hey. Hey, listen. I've drank more Sculpins than you've drank glasses of water, listener. It's true. I yep, it's fucking true. I know a Sculpin, dude. I just know a sculpin inside and out. Yeah, it is true. So that I haven't had enough Pliny's, but when I have had it, it's been uh, very good. Tanner, I think you remembered your your. I just thought drink. of my last one. Number five has got to be a good old mojito. What's I love mojito? that mint. I don't know. It's got mint leaves though, and I like it. It's like mint leaves, <laughs> okay. um, like tonic water. It's not tonic water. What's the other one? Uh, club soda. It's club soda yeah. lime. Oh, this is just one recipe I'm reading. Club soda, club soda, lime, rum, mint leaves, and sugar. Okay. Rum is a rum is a cocktail only liquor for me. I'm not drinking rum straight. I mean, rum I'll is do it. easy to drink straight. Hey, I mean, I drank I'll plenty of rum cocktails when I was in Saint Martin, which is in the Caribbean, which is where rum originated, right? <laughs> Sorry, we had some technical difficulties. Go technical on, though. Difficulties. You know, that's yeah, repeat, sorry. So. Yeah, I don't have to, don't <laughs> yeah, we? Yeah. No. Uh, but yeah, rum is uh, rum is the so easy to drink straight, though. Yeah. Maybe we should just make an alcohol podcast where the listeners send us alcohol and we try it and tell True. them what we think. What, what's your opinion on gin? Gin? Okay. You're going to get mad at me. Okay. But gin is the one... That I drank in St. Martin when I got sick. So that's why I, I now hate gin. Oh. I hate the taste of it. I hate the smell of it because no, I got I sick. It. I get it. Yeah. So I probably won't enjoy gin for another three years, honestly. Gin for me is like the opposite of rum. It's a liquor I will not drink mixed with anything. Gin is really good and I like it and I will drink it straight. I'll drink it neat or on the rocks. But there's gin. No Yes, but I've never Yikes. had a good gin cocktail. They just don't exist. Gin does not mix well. Now, some people might be what saying a martini. What is the popular martini. drink? Martini. That's Martinis the, are shit, yeah. It's vermouth and gin, I think. Yeah, martinis are, martinis are so bad. They're fine. If you I enjoy martinis, that like a cocktail, really. unsubscribe from this podcast. No, that's fake news. Martinis Black are fun. <laughs> Holy shit, yeah. Well, like, gin and know. juice, the song is good, yeah. Yeah, the that's rap a great song. Song. Yeah. But yeah, like gin and orange juice, like I'll look, hey, if it's got booze in it, I'll drink it. So but you don't like I'd much rather have vodka orange juice than gin and orange juice. It just tastes weird. So did you say you only drink rum Is a, in straight? a cocktail? No. No. Oh. I only oh. like rum in cocktails. I I'll drink rum straight. That's not a problem. Hey, it's not a problem. I'll do it. If you make yeah. me do it, I'll fucking do it. And it'll be fine. I but mean, it's yeah. it's not good unless it's Rum and cocktail. Coke is fantastic. Yeah, exactly. It's a mix. It's a it's a liquor that is made to be mixed, in my yeah. opinion. And gin is just not. So. Mm -hmm. Bombay, Sapphire, and Lemonade. You're tripping. Interesting. I've never tried that. I feel like that could be good with Lemonade. What's your opinion on Shandy's? And for those of you listening, a shandy is a mix of beer and like lemonade or tea, basically. Oh, I've never had it, but that sounds terrible. They're pretty good, dude. Some shandies are pretty good. They're pretty good. Those are like at a Dodger game or like that's a day drinking beverage. You're going to do some day drinking. You're going to have a little pool party, a little 4th of July action. Get out some shandies, dude. That's when a shandy is nice. When the sun is shining, you're getting a third degree sunburn and you're just sipping on a shandy, dude. Yeah. Dude, some of these guys have interesting drink. Fireball cream soda. I've never heard of that one. That sounds tasty, dude. Bourbon slush with cherry Dr. Pepper. What? I could see that being good, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Interesting. Interesting. Summer Shandy by Line and Kugel. Maybe you should maybe you should try drinking something else other than Sculpin IPAs every day. Or fucking Coronas, idiot. God, you're so dumb. That. 
My You're father's so a bartender. That's cool, Henry. That's cool. My dad, my dad probably employs yours. He drinks a lot. His last name. I is thought Riley. you were gonna say because he was the CEO. He's one hundred percent Irish. What is yeah. your dad's go-to drink? He mixes it up, but he mixes it up by the year. So he'll drink only like scotch for like three years, and then <laughs> I swear to God. And then all Neat. of a sudden, he'll be like, usually with ice, yeah. And then he'll switch to like Kettle One three years. And he'll just drink that. His beer has always stayed the same, though. Heineken. He drinks, he, here's what. <laughs> Heinekens here's what, are always good, though. Here's the child labor I was subjected to. 4 p.m., Casey, go put a beer in the freezer. So I'd take a Heineken from the fridge, put it in the freezer. And then at 5 p.m., Casey, go get my beer out of the freezer. <laughs> it had to just be as cold as possible, like almost frozen. Uh, so he'll have two Heinekens, and then he'll have some some vodka, and then uh, wine on you know holidays. Damn. But anyway, my parents don't drink at all. Really? Like anything? Did they? My mom like once a year a will drink like or? a cocktail at Christmas. I don't know. They've just like. I don't, they've just never, I don't know. Interesting. Never enjoyed alcohol. I'll keep that in mind for sure. So and That's why, that's part of the reason I didn't, like, even have a sip of alcohol. Like, literally not a sip, probably until I was 21, and that was actually just a sip. And I didn't actually drink my first full beer till I was probably 23 or 24. That's so weird. Because yeah. there was no alcohol in the house, and I never had any, like, want to drink it anyways. Plus, I was straight edge. I have a straight edge tattoo. He, he doesn't. <laughs> if I learned that he did this, he would be, he would unsubscribe I'd, from the podcast. I'd considered it when I was like 18, getting one. That's fucking hilarious. I'm so Ben and I had did. talked about it. Yeah, well, you guys get drunk and play Call of Duty now, so I guess it's good you didn't. Yeah. I had my first sip of alcohol well, when I was probably nine. From my dad. Jesus. He's like, hey, you want to try this? I was like, sure. Oh. It was fucking awful. <laughs> was That's so why bad. now all you do is and he just work at a shit crying, job and run laughing. a Call of Duty podcast. Oh shit! Yeah, I've, yeah. Well, I suffered from fetal alcohol syndrome, so that's why I'm like this. That's a joke, by the way. I mean, maybe it's true. I don't know. I doubt it. Let's move on. Good question, though, Humpty. Uh, also, Vinny Bon Bon with the sub. Let's go. One month, dude. Welcome, brother. Nice to see you. Welcome. I hope you've been enjoying the program. And uh, thank you for the sub, brother. I appreciate it. Got some interesting cocktail suggestions from Vinny Bonbon. Bon. Change it. Uh, in the chat. Fireball and cream soda tastes like a Cinnabon. It sounds like it tastes good, but it's like too sweet for me. I don't... If I want something sweet, I'll eat dessert. I'll eat a cake, right? Or a piece of cake. Not a whole cake. Uh, but anyways, thank you for the sub, dude. I appreciate it. Now, move on to our next question. I appreciate it, Vinny. Thank you. Jaron, Iron Ranger, asks... Ooh, this is an interesting question. Ooh, Andrew, this is the spiciest question we've ever got. We might get some Malders and Unsubbers when we answer this. Okay. Although, I have a pretty interesting take. Pineapple on pizza, yay or nay? My, <laughs> my continued Damascus support depends on this answer, boys. Great question. What are your thoughts, Tanner? Pineapple on pizza. So, hold on. Regarding his continued Damascus support, are you thinking his answer is no pineapple on pizza? Because that's what I'm assuming, is that he's a no pineapple on pizza guy. It's so that what you're hard. Thinking? It's so hard to guess. I don't know. Because yeah. people know that this is a hotly debated this is a, issue. This is a debate for there, sure. There's like the Israel-Palestine conflict... Medicare for all and pineapple on pizza. These are yeah. like the hot button issues of <laughs> our generation. Yeah. Uh, yikes. This is. I'm going to kind of stay in the middle here. So. I always thought, well, for I didn't like pineapple for a long time. I always thought pineapple on pizza was disgusting. It was utter shit. Um, you were garbage if you ate it. It wasn't until probably three or four years ago. I tried it for the first time and I was like, oh, my God, this slaps. But listen. You can't just get pineapple and cheese. I mean, that's just disgusting. 
But if you're getting pineapple and like jalapeno and pepperoni or just pepperoni and pineapple, that's pretty good. I kind of just got sick of it quickly. Like I ate it for maybe a year or two and then I just I had to stop. So I still don't hate it now, but I just don't order it anymore. But if like somebody orders a pineapple and pepperoni pizza and that's all there is to eat, I'm not going to sit there and be like, you put pineapple on this pizza like what are you You'll doing no i'm just gonna eat it starve to death. i'll just no yeah yeah exactly i'm just gonna eat it because i don't care that much because i'm not a fucking rager like that so i'm gonna say yay it is okay it's serviceable but if you're putting just pineapple on there then please please seek help because there's something wrong in your brain if you're just eating pineapple and cheese right yeah put another topping on there um, I don't know what else goes well with it besides like pepperoni like or the jalapeno. Style. They usually I don't do... like Hawaiian. Hawaiian. If you like Hawaiian pizza, I don't know what to tell you. That's the you have, most common. You have even more mental. Yeah, that's disgusting. I don't. I don't know that. Oh my god, they're all they're already molding. Okay. These fucking shit kids. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna say yay. It's okay. I even though I don't eat it anymore. I'm gonna. I'll give you a pass for it. Right. Okay. That's fair. So pineapple on pizza is like, it's very similar. You can eat pineapple on pizza if you're also drinking a shandy. So this is, this is not a dinnertime pizza. It's a lunchtime pizza. And as Tanner said, not only pineapple. You need to have the whole spread. You need pineapple. You need the Canadian bacon, which is ham, by the way. You need all Don't of order the... Canadian bacon, which is ham, by the way. Well, whatever. Whatever the Hawaiian style is, that's the only way that pineapple on pizza should be eaten. And only when the sun is out. If there's no sunlight at the time that you're considering putting the slice of pizza with pineapple on it into your mouth, and there's no sun out, again, this is the wrong time and put the pizza down. But if you're at a pool party, lunchtime pizza... Pineapple on pizza is okay. Now, also, the problem with pineapple on pizza is it's not good leftover. You can eat pepperoni pizza leftover and it's fine. You can eat cheese pizza leftover and it's fine. Meat lovers pizza leftover and it's fine. Pineapples, not good. Not good reheated. Not good the next day. Not a good leftover pizza with pineapple on it. It, does, it doesn't work. So I would say yay, but under very specific conditions. I wasn't listening to any of that. Did you say it wasn't good reheated? Yes. You are exactly correct. That yeah. is true. Something I didn't think of, but I do know. And it like, it makes the pizza soggier, which pisses me off because I like my pizza nice and crispy and crunchy. And as they cook the pineapple, it just like, the juice just melts into the cheese and into the fucking crust on the bottom. And it just makes it a disaster. Yeah, and the texture of the actual pineapple, too, just gets, like, shitty. Like, soggy, a little a little too mushy. It's just not good. It's just not good. So. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. So, hopefully. It's, yeah, that's a fantastic question. We may have one less patron, though, when he listens it's possible, to possible, yeah. We'll see where uh, where he falls on this issue. But um, but it was a good question, so thank you, sir, Iron Ranger. Next one is from Lemur Party. Dumb bitch asks, when are the travel mugs going to come back in stock on the fucking merch store? I'm going to answer this one. I don't know, but we're going to have a new merch store soon. And we will include travel mugs just for you, Lemur. Okay? So just wait. Wait until the website's done. We'll have... Let's not say just for her. Well, of course, I'll allow other people to buy it. I was trying to make this Lemur party feel special here. But whatever. Okay. We're going to have travel <laughs> mugs when the website is done and we'll have the new merch store. But it's not going to be for a while. So fucking relax. Yeti uh, mugs incoming? Well, we'll we're, we're in talks with Yeti on a sponsorship deal. Just kidding. That's you are fake news. You're absolutely not in talks with anyone because no one likes us. Uh, <sighs> but anyways, Lemur, thanks. Uh, Go Blue Mason. 
was going for a juggernaut kill streak, a viable nuke strategy in M Dub 2019 Game of the Year edition. Tanner? No. I. Mm. Did you get any jugs? Did you ever try it? <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Is I equipped a juggernaut about two times, but I wouldn't say I equipped it. I probably equipped it actually less than the suit or the streak. Like, did you did you choose the streak and then not get it? Is that what you mean? Or do you mean you actually? No, I'm put talking the about just on. I'm not even like selecting the kill streak. So in the one year I played Modern Warfare, I probably equipped the Juggernaut kill streak a total of definitely no more than 15 rounds played, probably closer to like 10 rounds. Okay. And did you ever I mean, actually I just, use the the Juggernaut? Yeah, of course I did. Okay. I probably got it every time I called it in. Well, it just it was awful. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. you walked so slow. It's just there was no reason in running. I don't care how good the minigun was. It took me 12 minutes to get to the other side. And you're on map, everyone's you know? minimap. They just run And you're on them. everyone's radar. Yeah, it's yeah. just, it's dumb. And then they call in their airstrikes on you, their gunships, their chopper gunners. So it was uh, the worst kill streak in the game. Easily. So, yeah, you're always on the minimap. You're slow as shit. Everyone knows where you are. They know not. They know to avoid you. And since you're so slow, you're actually kind of easy to kill. And also, I don't even know if Juggernaut kills would have counted toward a nuke in that game. They might have counted like a VTOL kill, which wouldn't have counted you towards your nuke. So even if they did count towards your nuke, of course it wasn't a viable strategy. But even if it did, uh, but also it might not have. So absolutely not. And also... If you were taking Juggernaut, that means you were giving up some other streak that would have been way more helpful to get a nuke. So, yeah, there's no universe where this was a good thing to use. Yeah, I got it a couple times and uh, like Tanner, I equipped it very, very few times and I used it maybe three times in that year. And it's terrible. Yeah. One time I got it on fucking uh, Euphrates Bridge and that is the worst oh, map to get. Oh, yikes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be running. Well, Grozner Raid is probably worse. Gro yeah. Well, doing anything on getting a nuke on Grozner Raid. I'd rather I'd rather go zero and forty on shipment than go than get a nuke <laughs> on Grozner Raid, I'm gonna which go is pee. of course virtually impossible. I actually did almost get a nuke on Grozna with an M4 early, 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 but I think I died at like twenty six or something. F's in the chat. Uh, but anyways, yeah. Of course it's not blue. Of course it's not. Next question. XTP, since Charlie Intel keeps denying my request to have both of you on the show, okay, no surprises there, I'll ask their signature question. Oh my god. Favorite sandwich. I didn't know this was their signature question. I've watched one episode of their, their podcast. Not because I hated it or anything, I actually quite liked it, but I don't know, I've forgotten to like continue listening i guess it didn't leave that much of an impact on me but anyways whatever um, so apparently this is their signature question why are you laughing tanner i'm not laughing i just can't wait for my answer okay well now's the time well i'm trying to pull it up you answer i actually don't know what my favorite sandwich is how do you spell extraordinaire am i that dumb ext e-x-t-r-a-o-r-d-i-n-a-i-r-e Okay, answer the question. I don't know, dude. Well, I'm trying to pull mine up, right? Because <laughs> it's the best sandwich I've ever had in my life. Uh, okay, what's favorite that? Oh, sandwich. no, what's that place called? Maybe like a, yeah, I don't know. I'm not a big sandwich guy. I'll keep it a buck fifty with you. Uh, honestly, oh, I was typing the wrong name. My favorite sandwich is a fucking cheeseburger. <laughs> You're so white. Like, actually, uh, I mean. You're such a white piece of actual shit. Holy <laughs> cow, yeah, dude. Yeah, for sure. That's certainly possible. Or, or my dad makes these fried egg sandwiches. And they're fucking good, dude. He fries an egg, right? Put some butter 
on two pieces of okay, sourdough. Okay, he fries an egg. Okay, okay, okay. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm. So you I'm all caught up. So you to <laughs> he fries an egg. So I hope you're caught up. Okay. He toasts two pieces of sourdough bread. Okay. He places them on a plate. Butter. He butters the fuck out of both slices of bread. Before or after he toasts them? Does he toast them on a frying pan or in the toaster? I believe in the toaster, but I've never okay. seen his so process. Then he, so he butters it after, okay. And then he butters it at post toast. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So the butter is from the fridge. Now there's this trendy thing that people do now where they put butter on like a countertop and then put a little cover over it so it's room temperature. <laughs> Stop Let's not say it. trendy. That's what the grandmas do. Every old lady I know does that. That's not new and trendy. Well, That's an old lady is. thing. Just like a vinyl record, our grandmas used to listen to those too, but now these fucking hipster 19-year-olds have taken these over as well. And I think the butter is another thing. The countertop butter. Hey, I don't want room temperature butter. I want it fucking freezing. And then I want it on a hot piece of bread, a, a, steam, a piping hot piece of bread, so then there is just... <laughs> Like, you get that bite where it's like, ooh, that's like a cold little chunk of butter, and it's fucking extraordinary. So keep your butter in the fridge, number one. And, of course, since we have some class at the Riley household, we don't well. put our butter on countertop. <laughs> fucking wrong. Like, we're 16th There's no century class there. Danish pasture farming peasants, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. So, okay. So he takes the butter out of the fridge, lathers the fuck out of the two pieces of bread, Throws the fried egg on there, encloses the sandwich, and serves it to to uh, to me. That's my favorite sandwich. It's I'm one of the most basic, guy. worst sandwiches I've ever heard of. It's super. So it's I bare enjoy. Bones, dude, it's the worst sandwich I've ever heard of. I enjoy sandwiches so much that I have two answers. Right. So one of them, okay. I'm just I'm gonna read it off to you because this. Sierra and I had this sandwich for the first time. We went we went down to see the guys. I um the gay couple. I custom ordered and designed her engagement ring from, Not that right? there's anything wrong with that. No, of course there's nothing wrong. They, I mean, they design perfect jewelry. Okay. So, went down there. She was getting another ring. And I found this sandwich shop, right? So it's called Subculture Sandwiches. You'll never go there because it's more than 20 miles from your house. But so, let me read this off to you. I get the Dirty Bird, which is turkey, bacon, jalapeno cream cheese, cherry peppers and pickles but wait there's more okay all sandwiches come with tomatoes onions peppers lettuce and house-made sandwich dressing here it goes here it comes here it comes on our fresh baked garlic dutch crunch bread Ooh. you will Sounds never good. eat bread that delicious i swear it is the best piece of bread i have ever had in my life <laughs> i mean it's Sounds good it sounds good. I you'll never eat a sandwich other than this and just think holy shit that's the best sandwich I've ever had but this it's absurd actually I mean it's fantastic so that's the best sandwich ever Jesus you all right bud yeah <sighs> the second one um uh have you ever had a a torta a, a or as we white people say a torta I I think I have I'm not sure Okay not, so there's this not place recent memory there's this place in Cambria, Cambria, California, which is where we got married. Um, and when you order the pork torta and it comes with mayo, onion, Ooh, tomato, wow. cheese, which the cheese is like, it's that Mexican cheese. I don't know what it's called. There's a name to it. They don't even list it on their website. It just says cheese. Yes, but so? it's this, it's like hardened cheese. I don't, oh my God. How do you explain it? I don't know, but it's delicious. Hardened cheese, interesting. Yeah. Salsa and jalapenos on their fresh bread. And again, their bread is so good. And that's what makes a sandwich, I think. It all comes down to the bread. Mm -hmm. The bread, I mean, you could have the perfect ingredients inside. And if you put it on Wonder Bread, oh my God, you just made the worst sandwich in the world, right? You have to get good bread. It is so good. Uh, co co Cotija. Cotija. I think that's it. I think that's it, Chef. Oh well, he's his name. His name has chef in it, right? So he knows. Chef that's Kane. it. Yeah, that's the cheese. Know. Yeah, he would know. Dude, I that take back is... my answer. By the way, I've actually talked about this. I think maybe on the program. You know that place, Butter Cafe. I'm almost uh -huh. positive we talked about this. Their brisket sandwich. That's my number one sandwich, easily. I don't know what kind of bread it's on, but it's good bread, and they put brisket, 
and like uh, horseradish, I think. And then some kind well, of... Well, the brisket is pre-cooked and they microwave it, but no, continue. No, they don't, dude. It's, yes, they do. It's so good, dude. It's so good. They don't good. make anything there, Joey. I'll call Joey right now. Well, I'll phone okay. a friend. Joey worked there. They don't make anything there. Well, it's all heated up. It's the best microwaved brisket I've ever had in that case. It's so good. I don't know. And then they put like a sauce on it. I forget what it is, but it's really good. That's my favorite sandwich. Have you ever had focaccia bread? F focaccia bread yes i've had it i've been to italy i've had it fresh made there you just love setting me up tonight don't you you're such a cunt these questions are just setting me up you're i mean the sandwich question the alcohol question now this you're well you're just rat. dumb you're setting me up and you deserve it i yeah that's that is of course true yeah yeah but that uh oh for, my god that torta is insane bro interesting cotija cotija yeah yeah <laughs> microwave brisket dude there's no way they make microwave. their own brisket there there's no way they make microwave. their own brisket they they cook things it's a restaurant why doesn't chef chime in here and tell us how many restaurants actually make fresh food butter is an interesting place because it's like it's barely above a fast food place Butter it's is fast food. It's just restaurant. you sit down. Yeah. You sit down and it's like I, well, a, they don't even wait on you. Actually, you order up front. Yeah, exactly. It's it's like it's not McDonald's. It's above that. It's, McDonald's is better. That's uh, that's OK. We're going to move on because I'm about to fucking okay. punch my mom. No, no, no. With how no, 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 dumb no, no. That statement was the first time I ate at butter butter cafe and bakery San Dimas, California. Um, I ate there. And my burger was literally raw on the inside. I mean, not like slightly undercooked. It was raw and cold. So I had to send it. It was disgusting. You I sent it back. They, in the microwave. I sent it back. They gave me another one. It was disgusting. And they paired it with their shit frozen tater tots that they threw in the microwave for a few minutes. And then they dipped in the fryer for 30 seconds. I mean, terrible. The That's worst so restaurant. Weird. That was the only time I've ever been to Butter. I'll never go back. I don't That's care so how good you weird. say it is. I don't care if Gordon Ramsay visits it and says it's the best breakfast on earth. I won't go back. A raw burger is fucking disgusting. So I don't. I don't blame you. you I felt bad too because they were like new, and I was like, oh my god. So I took the leftovers home and I got home and just threw them out because I didn't want to do it there because I felt bad. Yeah, that makes sense. So fuck that place, right? I'll, I'll their their mind. owner also called a female a cunt in a public Yelp review. So, what? Yes, true story. Oh well, now I'm true going story. there twice as often. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic, dude. I can't believe how dumb someone would have to be to do that on their own fucking Yelp. Mm -hmm. That's so crazy. Exactly. And was she a cunt exactly? Yeah. She the was. she wasn't in the review. I don't. I mean, it was a normal review. She just said the place was trash, basically, and he called her a cunt. So. That's so fucking funny. How did you find that? Oh, this was a couple couple of years ago. I think I don't know. It was when like Joey was working there still. I think or after. I don't know. Okay. Well. Anyways, good question. Let's scoot on past it. Salty rhombus. Uh, this is a very odd question. What is your favorite reload animation in either M Dub or Cold War? Every time I reload the M uh, the Fal and M Dub, I feel like a king. That's a great the Fal and M Dub's a great answer. <laughs> That's a really good you reload, like, yeah. You like tilt it and you just like fucking force the mag out and then slap another one in there. Especially yeah, that if is. you're using sleight of hand or specialist, dude. The foul, if you like the foul in M-Dub Reload, wait until you put sleight of hand on it. And your dude just fucking twists it. That shit yep. just flies out, gets a collat, and then you put in another mag and you're just good to go. Great answer, yep. Salty Rhombus. Tanner, what are your thoughts? Let me think about this for a second. In Cold War or Modern Warfare? Mine's pretty easy. I'm, I'm surprised you aren't going to have the answer I have. What's yours? I'll wait. Well, okay, so my initial thought is the AK-47 because it's just a classic reload. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I'm trying to think of like something that's really like impressed me or I thought, oh, that's a great reload. And I can't think of any right now. So I'm just going to go with the old classic, the old standby, the AK-47. 
Mine is the car 98. You're just feeding. And well, I don't. It takes four hours to reload. So oh, no. it takes too long, but the, it looks cool because you can actually <laughs> well. your guy just grabs a fucking handful of just bullets, dude. <laughs> and you see these just thick fucking beefy bullets, these chunky bullets, dude. And he just like thumbs them in one by one. And it's like there's just death with every load. It's just headshot, headshot, headshot. I'm going to send this through someone's some idiot's brain in Verdansk. Just loading well, them in. Well, you haven't hit anybody with a car oh. 98 ever in Verdansk. That's fake so. news. That is, of course, fake news. But, yeah, the car. Or uh, the Magnum is cool, too. Where you, like... You, You're so dumb. You put Holy the, shit. What's it called? You are what dumb. Is, what is the cylinder in a Magnum called? I don't know. Okay. This guy pretends he shoots guns. But whatever. Well, I the don't thing own is, a fucking Magnum. Where like the the circle, like it goes to the side. You like flip it's called it a out. cylinder. It's called a revolver cylinder. Cylinder, yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, and then like he dumps the he dumps them on the ground, and then you like put the new ones in, and then you and then the best part is when it's it's freshly loaded. He like twists it, and it like snaps back into place, and it looks fucking cool when he does that. This is such a good. This is a sleeper good question. There's probably other cool reload animations too. Jake made a good point. The Uzi, the uh, yeah, the Modern Warfare Uzi is nasty. That How reload. does it reload? I don't remember. Well, the mag is like inside the handle, basically the grip. You know, you pull it out, put the oh, new one in. Oh yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah. Spas twelve um, is a is a good one too, or not the spas. 725 is a good one. 725 you, you is interesting, yeah. You collapse it, and then you see the smoke coming out, and then mm -hmm. you just, like, fucking whip it True, back into place. True, and you place. see the... Yeah, you see the shells being placed Those in. Those are pretty good. Those are pretty good. But I yeah. think there are certain shotguns, certain pumps. I don't think the Spaz-12 in Cold War, but where you load the shells, and then you have to cock it again. And that looks fucking cool. Cocking yeah. a shotgun is just the coolest animation. You just love cocks, for a yeah. Gun. I, do, I do love... I love cocks. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So where you just fucking like you whatever, just sh sh you rack the slide as as us gun enthusiasts would it? say, as yeah, we gun enthusiasts would say. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But anyways. Interesting. Very good question. If I thought about this more, I I think I could have a better answer. But those are my thoughts. Okay. Okay, this is a very 12-year-old question, so we'll we'll fucking fly through this one. Bjorn. Oh, we have three 12-year-old questions. Okay. Yikes. Here we go. Combined age of these questions is 24 years old. For Raz, <laughs> if Tanner said he loved M-Dub and it was the best COD ever, would you still be friends? Why? Yes. Because it's a video game and I don't care. For Tanner, if Raz said he loved M-Dub and it was the best COD ever, would you still be friends? Why? I mean, MW, yes, but if he said that about Cold War, no, I'd cut him off forever. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> okay, Jordan. The ter terrible question. Thanks for trying. <laughs> the worst question we've ever had. It's for sure, yeah. Uh, Tyler08, the another drop child. Theoretically speaking, if Warzone were to eliminate wrong two loadouts and go to picking up base guns and having attachments being lootable like they were in i believe blackout would you ever play warzone as much as you did in mdub this is actually a good question uh basically the question is would you have preferred there to be no loadout system and it be more traditional where you have to just pick up all your weapons like other brs which we if we about, never right? if we never had the loadout system and we didn't know about it, then yeah, I'd be totally fine with that because that's the way like most games. That's like pub, how PUBG does it. That's how Blackout did it. Um, so yeah, I would play it and I would be okay with it if it were that way. But the fact that we know about the loadout system, you know, we hated it at first. We were big, big op opponents of it at first. We thought yeah. it was the dumbest thing. And, and now we realize how much. That. Yeah. And and now we've realized what well, we realized very quickly how much better it makes the BR play. So, um, I mean, if they were to like randomly switch back and be like, you know, we're taking loadout drops out. You have to find your optics. Oh, I would hate the game. Yeah. So, yeah, good, good, good question. But we've been spoiled with the loadout drops. 
the uh, the thing too that we hadn't considered because now we we both agree on what Tanner just said uh the loadouts make it way better is that it's fun to experiment with what guns are like good and shit in Warzone and if there's only ground loot then you don't ha you're not allowed to experiment really you just use mm -hmm. what you can pick up you know but with with the loadout thing you can like you know what? I'm going to try this gun. Maybe it's good. Or like, uh, I'm going to try this site or this attachment, or I'm going to set up this M13 for close range. Like you could do so much more customization and it gives it that longevity that makes Cold War multiplayer so successful, which is that customization factor. And it's also very cool that you can level a gun in multiplayer and then bring it to Warzone and see how it does. It's really cool. So, uh, we would have played it, like Tanner said, but we would not... I don't know if we'd still be playing it if it was only ground loot, honestly. It's like such a huge dimension that we would have just missed out on. But even if we were still playing it, it certainly wouldn't be as fun as it is right now. So Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm going to answer this myself. <laughs> If Raz would have dropped dead while reading this question, would the pod still go on? No. Would it be canceled? Yes. What would be the plan if this happened and why? <laughs> Tanner doesn't have do time end. to do the pod, so do it would end. end. Yeah. I would watch out. Alston Williams may be coming for you. Okay. Noted. Well, if anything, it'd be Hillary. It would be like a bullet through the back of his head as he sleeps. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, Bjorn. I, yeah. Tanner doesn't have time to do the podcast. And this is a two-person program. I don't think any single person could do it. Like, if Tanner died, I don't think we'd do it either. Maybe. I don't know. It's just so much better with two people, though. So, anyways, whatever. Go back to the drawing board there, kiddo. <laughs> I love you, Bjorn. I love you. You're 12. You're forgiven. Next one. Skyline. What if he's not actually 12? Just, he's really oh. just an idiot. He's the dumbest person <laughs> if he's not 12. That's a joke. Oh, Bjorn, man. you're fine. You're you're good, dude. Relax. You're just 12. <laughs> and 12-year-olds 12 do 12-year-old 12 things. Skyline Life asks, Seeing as XP tokens are continuing in Cold War for Battle Pass, weapons, etc., do you think adding the ability to activate all, if you were to want that, would be worth it or just a dumb shit idea? In MDub, I have hundreds, but they are in real time. So what if I wanted to activate all and have hours upon hours of extra XP? K, Tanner. Mm. What do you mean? If you can just stack them all, basically, so you don't have to keep equipping them? Yeah. I, I mean, it, I don't see anything wrong with it. What he's saying is, I wish it used in-game time rather than real-life time so that I could just activate them all knowing they won't be wasted that's basically oh, what he means you well of course yeah yeah and we agree did it yeah didn't somebody try to sue activision infinity ward for this because really? they're double xp i think they did like back when modern warfare first came out that's been another thing people complain about from the launch of modern warfare and they've still never changed which it's obviously an activision thing how they just they start you know the time starts going immediately yeah yeah yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Skyline. I agree. It would be great. I don't know why they do it this way, to be honest. The real-life time thing. It's very fucking weird. Uh, there's probably some monetary benefit or perceived monetary benefit from their end that would explain why they do this, because it doesn't make any fucking sense. And it's super annoying. So, yeah, I don't know. I wish it worked this way, but it doesn't. So, whatever. Sucks. Uh, but yeah, I agree with you. It would be nice. It would be nice to just equip all your double weapon XP tokens knowing they won't be wasted. I agree. Grimo, do you think that Cold War launch lived up to the hype? <laughs> Especially for you two, as you hated M-Dub so much. Or has it been a bit of a crap trap? Never heard that phrase before. Crap trap, yeah, interesting. This Grimo, tell us where you're from, because that is not an American thing to say. Uh, but anyways, uh, Tanner, what are your thoughts? Did Cold War launch live up to the hype? Well, I don't think it had an overabundance of hype around the game, to be honest. That's kind of true. 
Actually, but it definitely didn't live up to anything. I mean, it didn't even live up to being a decent game, I don't think. I don't know. Um, they, yeah, there, there wasn't a ton of hype around it. And so many people still play Modern Warfare and Warzone. I mean, one of the accounts, I can't think of who it was. One of the accounts on Twitter, I think it's that BK Tour guy, the one who doesn't speak English. Yeah. He's been tweeting like, Modern Warfare live player counts. And like yesterday, at one point, there were over 2 million people playing Modern Warfare multiplayer. Not Warzone. Really? Just multiplayer. I guarantee you, wow. almost with 100% certainty, that Cold War did not have that number yesterday at any point. I, don't, I think, I don't know. I don't think people like Cold War at all. So I don't think there was a ton of hype around it. I know I wasn't. I mean, I didn't expect much. I didn't expect almost anything. So I wasn't like overly let down per se. But um, people who thought like it was going to. I don't Some people were saying it was going to like save the COD franchise. I don't know. I mean, Warzone is the thing keeping Call of Duty very popular right now. And that's going to continue that way for a while, as true. we can tell. Actually true. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's it. I agree with Tanner, actually. It didn't have that much hype. Like, it... Uh, oh, excuse me. M-Dub had way more hype than Cold War. I'm not sure why, honestly. I don't know why M-Dub was so much more hyped than Cold War. Because prior to the game's releases, there was no... Re I don't know. It's weird. But, anyways, it didn't have that much hype. Well, it went back to modern. It was boots on the ground. I think it was the name, too. Like... Yeah, oh, it reminded modern, people of COD 4 and shit. Yeah, Modern Warfare is back. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's blah, true. Blah, blah. Agreed. Um, so no, it didn't live up to the hype uh, in general. And for me, it didn't live up to the hype either. I mean, it's infinitely better than m multiplayer, of course. <laughs> but uh, it's not as good as I wish it would have been. Uh, the sniper, I mean, it's not even as good as BO4. I think I actually agree with that. It's hard to say because operators are really, really bad. But the fact, the thing that's been making me the most mad in Cold War, now that I've played it quite a bit, is fucking snipers. Snipers yeah. with aim assist without flinch is impossible to outplay. And it's so fucking frustrating. And that's just always going to be a problem with this game. It's. It's so, it fur infuriates me, dude. I fucking hate it. And there are other problems, obviously, with Cold War. But, uh, but yeah, no, it didn't live up to the hype. Still better than M-Dub, though. Like, a yeah. lot, a lot better. A lot yeah. better, so. I just noticed when I play public Cold War matches that there are, like, no keyboard and mouse players. And I think there's, you know, kind of a trend there. I feel like they all went back to Modern Warfare. So. Yeah, yeah, they're all playing Warzone. Or doing well, not even that. It's just they're back in like modern warfare multiplayer. Yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. And there's reasons for that, you know. Sadly. So, anyways, uh, let's move on. Uh, C Bally, three months, dude. Let's go. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. With a tier one sub. Thank you, young man, and welcome back. And I appreciate you. Thank you, sir. I know it's been a while. Sorry. But I appreciate it, brother. Thank you. Next question here is from Jake Down, Cold War Denier. Okay. Uh, Jake in chat said we've kind of already answered this, but we'll touch on it a little bit. Did you guys have a chance to watch Nate Gibson's review of Cold War? Yes. Fuck. And if I so... I never did. That's fine. What are your thoughts specifically on the movement aspect he discussed? I don't remember a movement aspect, actually. Even if some of it was specific to top tier players, I agree with everything you said. Curious if you had the same experience. Yeah, I guess we kind of did talk about this. Uh, and also, I don't remember Nate talking about movement. I remember him talking about hit ridge. Uh, it probably movement sliding the overall mechanic. I'm sure he touched oh, on that. Oh, he was saying that they nerfed sliding from beta to launch. Oh, yeah. I think that's what Jake means here. Yeah. So... Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't matter that sliding didn't break aim assist either. That's so. the that's the bigger point. I was almost doesn't say. matter. It wouldn't matter how sophisticated the movement is with aim assist that strong. So I don't know. I agreed with most of what Nate's video said. I think the hit reg is better than he thinks it is. But 
the hit reg also could have gotten better since then. Because I don't experience hit reg issues very often at all. I experience hit reg issues now in Cold War to the same degree I experienced them in Black Ops 4. Which was not never. Sometimes. But not very often. And I'm like, I'm not happy about that, but I'm fine with it. At least I can see people, and at least the maps are three lanes. That's where I'm at. But, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah. Anyways, let's just move on here. Grimo, in your opinion, what are the worst three score streaks that have ever been put into COD games? Sorry if this has been asked multiple times before. It hasn't. Tanner, what are your thoughts? Hmm. The worst ones. Uh, like we were saying earlier, Juggernaut, I genuinely think, is one of the worst. Yes, absolutely. Modern Warfare Juggernaut. Com I mean, there's no reason to run that at 15 kills. It's so stupid. Yeah. Um, Man. I feel like all of mine are from M-Dub. I mean, like... <sighs> what else was in Modern Warfare? The fucking turret that you had to mount. Oh, shield turret? Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, shield turret would for sure be. be down there. I think RCXD is just dumb too. Yep. I know it's like a classic, but it's like I haven't equipped RCXD once in Cold War, and I plan on never equipping. It's just so dumb. Yeah. I mean, even for the amount of points it takes to get, it's just like you. It doesn't take anything, but it's just not worth it. Yeah, a thousand percent. I agree. I think mine are almost the same. Uh, slightly different. So. Worst score streak of all time has to be that shield turret. It's so fucking bad. It's so bad in MW. You just get picked off of it. And it's like on the minimap. It's awful. And the RPM is like one. Uh, yeah. It's really bad. So that's number one. Number two is Juggernaut. Because for 15 kill streak, you get a dog shit fucking uh, reward. It's really bad. Yeah. Uh, and then number three is probably the Cold War combat bow. It is useless. It is so bad. It's it's good if you hit your shots, but it's hard to hit anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But then it's like, why not just use a sniper? Yeah. It's like just way better. The combat bow is so yeah. fucking dog water in Cold War. So that's what I would yeah. say. There's probably worse ones. I can't think of them, though. So anyways. Oh, yeah. Um, you want to finish this page? It? Oh, uh, there's a lot more page, huh? isn't there? Yeah, we can we can we can wrap here. Yeah, it's the end of the yeah, screenshot. Let's, yeah, let's wrap here. Okay, cool. Let me just... Okay. Let me just... Yeah, go ahead and go live. Rat. All right, so we're going to end it there, uh, but we're going to play a hefty amount of Call of Duty Warzone uh, right now. So before we do that, iTunes reviews. I know we haven't done these in a while, and we have a lot to catch up on, so we're going to dive right the fuck into it. This is an interesting review. Great podcast, but eh, community is the title of this review. Damn. I love the podcast. It's a 10 out of 10, but the community isn't that cool. The Discord is toxic, and people are sort of being asses. But like, whatever. The podcast is great. I don't know about the watchers, though. You're a watcher, by the way. I'm aware you can't change that, though. I will continue to watch, but we'll stay away from the Discord and other social medias. Now, when I read this, I was genuinely surprised because the Discord is not toxic at all. I don't... Well, right? we're toxic, but everyone messes around. I don't... Yeah. We're... Like, yeah, like, you know, I'll, I'll tell people that they're absolute they're worthless as human beings of course but i'm joking and i'm telling someone i'm telling that to someone who i know will understand that i'm joking you know so like maybe yeah. he saw people joking with each other and didn't realize they were friends and then thought it was toxic that's my guess because there's be. no that i i've seen almost no actual mean-spirited toxicity in the discord so this is a this was a very weird review to read uh but anyways whatever mr dislike i'm glad you enjoy the program and thank you for the five stars and uh consider coming back to the discord dude everyone's cool we'll be we'll be nice we might do some light ribbing but only when you know you're friends so 
So anyway, thanks for the review, dude. PJ Krantz. Okay. Best podcast that ever was or ever will be true. Enjoy the analytics, you rats. Keep doing what you do. Don't change anything and stay humble. Wish Casey and Tanner the best for 2021. The hard work is appreciated and will pay off. I certainly hope so. Join the Patreon, real and true. Best five United States dollars ever spent. Let's go. Well, PJ, thank you, dude. I appreciate the analytics and I did enjoy them. You stupid bitch. Next one. Royally bad at Apex. Change it. 10 out of 10 would recommend. These guys are hysterical and deserve all the love they get. True. Sub to me on YouTube at drizzle underscore Y04 and stay humble. Also, I'm giving you the analytics and stating that I am because I'm not getting scammed by you. I'll keep that in mind. Well, change your name, but also I appreciate those analytics. Thank you, sir. Next one. Awesome pod by Midnight. 1298 and it's midnight like a knight in shining armor change it you're not clever yikes too many numbers also but thank you came across the pod one day at work while looking for a dedicated call of duty pod podcast and it easily became my favorite i especially love okay i especially love when raz wears a dress on stream so okay well that's that's never happened but Midnight, 1298, change it. Can't believe I have to say that again. Uh, I appreciate the analytics, brother. Thank you. This next one is from Jack Owen, 98. The title of this review is Change It. Okay, not clever. Quality, po quality pod, lads. Keeps me going in work. From Great Britain. Well, Jack. I feel like Jack is a very British English name, right? Am I bugging, Tanner? Okay. Fuck me, right? I'm the asshole. I bet you Tanner has himself muted because he's shit. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Anyways, uh, thank you, Jack. I appreciate it, dude. And I'm glad we keep you going at work, brother. This next one from Sin City Terps. Hi, my name is James. On Twitch, I'm known as Sin City underscore Terps, T E R P S. Uh, I love the pod and just wanted to say you guys are my inspiration for growing on Twitch and I can only hope to be as big as you guys could on Twitch with our humble community. Well, sir, you should not aspire to be us because we do a podcast about a video game, which is the worst thing you could do. But I appreciate the analytics, brother. Uh, Sin City underscore Terps. Uh, and if you want to grow on Twitch, make a YouTube channel. There's my advice for you. Uh, but thank you sir for the uh the review and then last one here too poor for patreon f's in the chat by urban bigfoot okay mm, okay if i wasn't broke i'd subscribe to the patreon you guys rock this is one way to support without giving us a measly a meager five united states dollars per month leave us a nice little itunes review dude yeah Leave us a nice little iTunes review. So Urban Bigfoot, no worries, brother. No worries at all. I'm glad you're listening. I'm glad you're enjoying. And I'm especially thankful for the five-star review. So thank you, Urban Bigfoot. Much love. And thank you to all of our reviewers. Make sure to go to iTunes, rate us five stars. And if you write a review, we will read it on the program. Much love, much appreciation. Deacon Cheese, five gifted subs. Let's go, dude. Deacon, the demon, Demon Cheese. Change your name to Demon Cheese. That would amuse me, right? So do that. Also, thank you for the five gifted subs, young man. I love and appreciate you. Deacon's becoming a longtime listener and supporter of the program, and we appreciate you, Deacon. So thank you, brother. It means a lot. I appreciate it. With that said, we're going to go game in Verdansk. Uh, Tanner, you're live? Yeah. Okay. Patreon.com slash the drop shot. Five bucks a month. Four bonus episodes a month. 
access to the entire back catalog, you can, uh, you know, get access to all those. That's the best way to support us. So please do that if you have money to waste. Do it there. You can find us on social media. Uh, you know, whatever. YouTube.com slash Razadon. Subscribe there as well. Video episodes of the program, along with clips from the program for you to share with your dipshit friends and gameplay breakdowns and shit, which will be returning relatively soon. Uh, make sure to subscribe. We have two merch stores. See the links for those in the show notes. Join the fucking Discord. Link is there uh, as well for the Discord. It is not toxic and it is in fact fire. And last but certainly not least, an extra special fucking thank you to Mulletproof with the five gifted subs. Let's go. Mullet has gifted a total of 439 subs in this channel. Jesus. That is fucking insane, dude. Mullet, the very, uh, very supportive member of our small but vibrant and extremely humble community. I love you and appreciate you, Mullet. Thank you very much, dude. A special thanks to you, brother. Uh, your support means the world. Some might say it's life-changing. We'll get into it. Episode 101. And also an extra special thank you to our Damascus patrons, Mr. Salmonella, Jay Pritch, Slivovitz, Jake Down, Zorosio, To Kill a Rocking Bird, Face Esquire, Gift Curse, Adam H, Sniff Sniff Hambone, Change It, Jimbo Slice, aka Mulletproof, Von Trapp, Lyle P, Aussie Menace, Go to Note, Tanner would love to meet a 12 year old, Papa Shitto, Siv, Blackbeard, Dr. J Webb, Nick Can, King Camper, Derek R, Wade M, It's to Pickle, That Dirty Clap, Kyle S, Kill a Cam, One Handed, 89, Garrett S, Jada Pinkett Smith, Lemur Party, Freeze the Dave Daly, Read a Book, aka Young Evan, Deacon Cheese, Sage Legacy, Rizzle Music, Toady Boy, Total Toad, Manny Marr, Samuel, Cope Cowboy, Crisp Eclair, Thomas L, Blake C, Levon Affair, The 332nd, Brian P, Jaron G, Maxi, Shigo Hart, DTV Trump Maga 20, Proud Dad, McBango, Hank Swift, L2K Greatness, Flex Stepdad, Get Scammed, Big Wreck, Chad G, Nick Venomous, Sweaty Amosis, Steven S, Hank S, See You Later Boy, Change It, Kelly M, Ryan S, SP Farms, The Drop Farmer, The Crop Shotter, Simple Name 8, <laughs> Venlu, and an extra special thank you to our one and only Obsidian patron, the Dropshot Patriarch, who has been absent lately. We miss you, Viking, if you're still listening to the program. Perhaps he's forgotten about it, doesn't what listen. What do you mean, he's in the Discord yesterday? Oh, was he? I said that. He was posting in the Discord lately. I mean, yesterday he was in the Damascus chat. Oh, okay, cool. After the hangout, he was saying he's been busy, been with work. I don't know. He was saying something. How did I not see that? That's weird. Anyways, whatever. Okay, You were drunk. We discussed it. I was very drunk last night. So anyways, yeah, whatever. Uh, vaping Viking, thank you as well. So uh, much love, much appreciated. The Vaping Viking. So anyways, we're going to fucking wrap this bitch up. And we're going to go uh, get some dubs and Verdansk. So have an excellent evening, young kings. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And as always, please remember. Stay humble. Stay humble. Thanks for watching this episode of The Drop Shot, a Call of Duty podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe because in addition to full episodes like this, we've also got clips from the show as well as gameplay breakdowns and more on the channel. The show is streamed live on twitch.tv slash Razanon every Wednesday and Saturday at 7 p.m. Pacific time. So give us a follow over there. Make sure to turn on notifications and you can chat with us live during the podcast. And of course, we are available wherever you listen to podcasts. Just search for The Drop Shot on your favorite podcast app and make sure to give us a follow. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. And as always, remember, stay humble.